in this question we are given a set of column vectors defined by x equals to the set of x belonging to three dimensional real space and here we are given that x is equals to x1 x2 x3 transpose here note that this notation is a more convenient or compact way of writing a column vector a three dimensional column vector will be written like x1 x2 x3 like this but because it takes up a lot of vertical space so for a column vector rather than writing it is a 3 by 1 matrix we write it is 1 by 3 matrix that is x1 x2 x3 and then we write transpose of it so the column vector of size 3 by 1 is same as a row vector of size 1 by 3 then taken transpose and the components of our vector x satisfy equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to 0. So our vector space x is basically set of solutions of this equation. So basically we need to find the solution space of the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to 0. Here note that we have n that is number of unknown variables that is equals to 3 and m that is number of equations equals to 1. So we have one homogeneous equation in three unknowns and if I write that in matrix form that becomes 1 1 1 x1 x2 x3 that is equals to 0. Here note that this is our coefficient matrix A and A is of size 1 by 3 and here it is obvious that rank of A is 1 so R that is rank of A is 1 and we know that for a homogeneous system of linear equations in n unknowns if rank of coefficient matrix R is 1 then there are n minus r that is 3 minus 1 equals to 2 free variables and that will also be the dimension of our subspace x and r that is one constraint variable so here in our equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 we can choose two of the x's arbitrarily and third one will be solved in terms of other two variables using the given equation. So if I take x2 equals to minus alpha and x3 equals to minus beta where alpha and beta are real numbers and here note that I am taking minus alpha and minus beta so that our final answer comes the way our options are given otherwise we will have to do slight manipulation. So now if I substitute these values of x2 and x3 in our given equation then I get x1 minus alpha minus beta equals to 0. This gives me x1 equals to alpha plus beta. So our solution vector will be x1 x2 x3 that is equals to x1 is alpha plus beta x2 is minus alpha and x3 is minus beta. Now to extract our basis vectors from this form I will rewrite this as alpha plus beta minus alpha plus 0 beta 0 alpha minus beta. This I will separate out into two column matrices so that I can write as alpha minus alpha 0 plus beta 0 minus beta so our solution vector I can write as x1 x2 x3 equals to from this I can take alpha common so that will give me alpha 1 minus 1 0 plus from this I can take beta common so beta 1 0 minus 1 and if you can write these two 
vectors from this vector directly that is also all right we don't really have to go through these two steps here we see that our solution vector is written as linear combination of this vector and this vector and alpha and beta are real numbers so if i call this vector v1 and this vector v2 and our solution vector i write as x vector then this gives me x vector equals to alpha v1 plus beta v2 and here we see that our solution vector x is written as linear combination of vector v1 and v2 so we can say that our solution space capital x consists of vectors small x which are spanned by vectors v1 and v2 because here the alpha and beta are arbitrary real numbers and the way we have found vectors v1 and v2 they will be linearly independent so vectors v1 and v2 form linearly independent basis for our solution space capital x and if we want we can check that these two vectors are linearly independent using matrix rank method where i form a matrix with these two vectors as columns so that will be 1 minus 1 0 1 0 -1 this is a 3 by 2 matrix and if i quickly check rank of this matrix using minor method by considering this minor then value of this minor is 1 into 0 minus 1 into minus 1 that is equals to 1 which is not 0 that means rank of this matrix is 2 that means this matrix has two linearly independent columns and the columns of this matrix are nothing but our vectors v1 and v2 so v1 and v2 are linearly independent so here our option a is correct which says that the vectors 1 minus 1 0 and 1 0 minus 1 is a basis for subspace capital x and here note that the basis for a given vector space is not unique so here if instead of x2 and x3 if we had taken some other two x's as free variables then we would have got slightly different looking basis but that will also be a valid basis for subspace capital x